A while ago, Nils made this video on the Creality K1, and it got a lot of chatter. Many comments both agreed and disagreed with his feedback. After its initial release, Creality made some changes to the K1 based on comments from the community. The marketing team at Creality saw Nils's video and reached out to see if we would like to take a look at a re-released K1 and a K1 Max. Eric will be putting out his thoughts on the re-released K1, and today I'm taking a look at the K1 Max. The two primary questions I want to answer are, did Creality learn enough from the K1 to make the K1 Max perform better? And how does this printer actually stack up against other 3D printers in the current market? If you have any thoughts or questions on the Creality K1 Max, please add those in the comments below. Plus, if you have a project or something cool we should use this machine for, add that too. To get this out of the way, here are some general specs on the machine. The K1 Max has a 300 by 300 by 300 millimeter build volume and a core XY structure. It has a rigid die cast aluminum frame with a glass top and front door. It is capable of speeds up to 600 millimeters per second. The hot end features a ceramic heater that can heat up to 200 C in 40 seconds with a max temp of 300 C. This is a dual gear direct drive extruder with a hardened steel nozzle and automatic bed leveling. There are dual fans for part cooling and a very loud 18 watt auxiliary fan that blows across the build plate. The DC heated bed can heat to 100 C in three minutes and there is an included flexible build sheet. There's a 4.3 inch touchscreen and a USB port to interact with the machine locally. However, either through Wi-Fi or the onboard ethernet port, you can also monitor and upload new prints via Creality Print or the Creality Cloud mobile app. There is a camera installed for real-time monitoring, time lapses, and failure analysis during printing. And attached to the extruder assembly is a one micrometer resolution LiDAR for first layer detection and other AI tools. Much like others reviewing this machine has said, setup and unboxing was extremely easy. The printer is very well packaged and straightforward to unbox. It lifts out with the use of the plastic wrapped around it and has everything packed safely inside within foam. Packed with the printer are many supplies including the user manual, the printer touchscreen and feet, various tools for general maintenance and everyday use, an extra hot end, and a spool of Hyper PLA. Quick thank you to Creality for sending me an extra two spools. After removing all the plastic wrap and packaging, the instructions say to install the spool holder. Then we need to connect the touchscreen and finally remove the three screws that hold the bed in the lowered position during shipping. Once powered on, the printer guides you through a few general setup items, then the self-test can begin. The self-test runs through heating and fan checks, input shaping, and auto bed leveling. This process took around 17 minutes to complete. Once done, it was time to load filament and start printing. Like everyone out there, I started with the preloaded 16-minute Benchy in white Hyper PLA. The printer ran through its pre-print calibration steps and started laying down material. After the first layer, it ran a quick inspection and picked up speed. Overall, this Benchy is decent, although I don't like the difficult to remove raft. There are a few areas where material is sagging and some light stringing. Let's try something that will more readily show us the out of the box printing capability. I switched to blue Hyper PLA and printed this Autodesk FDM printer assessment model. Overall, it turned out well with a good first layer and bridging capability. The tolerance on the pegs and holes aligned fairly well with other printers. The outer wall does have some banding present, and the larger overhangs and bridges sagged pretty much as expected. There is quite a bit of stringing present on the stringing test, but perhaps the most concerning artifact here is the extrusion inconsistency on the top layers. There are areas of overextrusion where too much material is present, and voids where there isn't enough. This is using the Hyper PLA profile within Creality Print to test the generic profile. I printed this again in Polymaker Polyterra Army Red. The results are pretty much the same, including the uneven outer wall and inconsistent top layer extrusion. After these initial tests, it was time to move on to some more interesting items. This tower of Orthanc printed at a 0.1 millimeter layer height took around 11 hours. I really wanted to test the bed adhesion with something tall and narrow, while also determining the resolution the printer can achieve. Besides the stringing on some of the spires, this model looks good with some very high detail. To test the printer's tolerancing, I printed this foldable hanger. 
Although the outer wall has the slight banding that was present in the test models, this does unfold and operate as expected. Next I wanted to move away from PLA and try a few other materials. I printed the main body of this question block in Hatchbox PETG. For the most part it looks good, but I did notice some under extrusion on the first layer and some of the lines delaminated when removing from the build plate. Nothing that a few slicer tweaks can't fix, but my objective was to test the included develop profiles. After PETG, I gave TPU a try with this smooth octopus. Again, fairly decent quality for the speed. There is definitely some stringing around the legs, but that could be due to the high speed and not enough retraction, or this filament could have absorbed some moisture. Moving on to an ABS print. I ran this fan support for my Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon. Again, a good looking part with no major issues. There is some ghosting on the outer surface and inconsistent extrusion like we've seen before. With the other materials out of the way, I wanted to use the 300mm cube build volume and print something big. As I've said before, my favorite test model is the Calicat, so I wanted to see how big I could go. This 800% scaled version took just under 10 hours with lightning infill enabled. It's not bad quality with only a few imperfections. Mainly there was warpage away from the build plate and banding and ghosting along the exterior wall. But all that aside, it was incredibly satisfying to print something this large. With a handful of successful prints completed, I wanted to test the merit of the AI features. The onboard LiDAR, or light detection and ranging, is set up to measure the difference in height of extruded material on the first layer against the build plate surface. To test the first layer inspection, I intentionally pulled up the material to see if the LiDAR would detect the error. I did this four times and the first layer detection only caught it once. For comparison, I did the same thing on my Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon, which did see the fault three of the four times. To test the AI camera functionality, I intentionally knocked off the print and let it kept going, causing spaghetti. Unfortunately, even after leaving it for 20 minutes, there was still no indication that something was going wrong from the printer. Tools like this should become better and better as they become more commonplace, but for now, they're really only so useful. After my testing with the K1 Max, I developed a quick pros and cons list. You should make a pros and cons list. Let's start with the pros. This printer is fast and produces good quality prints. It's also very reliable and repeatable. In fact, in all of my testing, I didn't have any significant failures. The K1 Max is well built with all the features you would expect from a printer in 2023, like auto bed leveling, a filament runout sensor, power loss detection, you get it. Pairing all that with the fact that it prints really fast and has a very large build volume really makes it a good option for anyone looking for a new printer. The interface with Creality Print is really easy to use. It feels like Cura, but with the added connectivity options because that's what it is. Now onto some of the cons. The biggest downside to this printer, in my opinion, is the filament loading. A lot of friction builds up in the filament path from the back entry all the way to the extruder gears, making it difficult to feed filament all the way to the print head, especially when it comes to flexible filaments. And once the filament is at the extruder, the gears need to be unlocked, which means the top lid at least must be lifted. However, in my experience, most of the time, the Bowden tube needed to be slightly straightened to properly get the filament into the gears. Also, as Nils mentioned during his K1 video, the Creality Cloud app definitely has its faults with pop-up notifications and ads. It seems it has gotten better, but this just isn't my preferred method for interacting with this machine. The AI detection tools aren't specifically a con, but they just don't perform as advertised. Next is the sound. This printer is loud. This is primarily due to the 18 watt auxiliary fan. Even with two Bamboo Lab machines sitting next to it, when all three are running, I mostly hear the K1 Max. I feel like this could have been minimized if the machine was better enclosed. The front door has a pretty significant gap that accounts for the screen when opening, and the acrylic sides don't do much to dampen sound. Now, how does this printer sit in today's market? I would say it's one of Creality's best products just given the value it brings in its speed, quality, and size. There are a few areas of improvement on the print quality. In fact, I ran some of the same models in the same material on my Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon, which yielded overall better results. Of course, the print quality can be adjusted in slicer settings, but I was looking for a baseline comparison between the included stock profiles. 
The only major fault I can find with this machine is some of the quality of use elements, like the filament loading, the UI challenges, and just the overall noise level. I would say the Bamboo Lab printers provide an overall better user experience, but if you need the size, this printer is the way to go. Currently priced at $899, the Creality K1 Max is positioned very well in today's market. I just hope Creality continues to listen to the community and makes improvements to make this printer even better. Thanks so much for watching today. I'm Nils. I'm Eric. And I'm Wyatt. And this is the 3D Printing Zone.